I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, is brought to you by Go to Meeting with HD Faces. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. It's getting harder to say computer curmudgeon netcast. I almost tripped over it there. Ha <laughs> ha. But it is time for another netcast, and I'm glad you could join us because we are indeed proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Yes. Boy, we've got some cool stuff for you this week. Not the least of which is a demo of a Linux distribution that I really am excited about, and I want you to see it. Yes. So, I'll take the Tech Podcast insignia off there because I left it up, and I was like, what? It's still up there. (laughs) Of course, until I remove it, it will stay there. Yes. Anyway. (laughs) But we are proud members. You know, yes, we are. (laughs) I guess I could leave it up the whole program, but hey. (laughs) Anyway, we do have some really neat stuff for you this week. And, you know, as I did last week, I want to just remind you that our sponsor, Citrix Systems, I'm telling you, they're an awesome group, group of folks. I really appreciate them. And I appreciate them sponsoring... Uh, the drbill.tv show through techpodcast.com. So I just want to say that. I really appreciate that. And while I'm at it, let me tell you a little bit about GoToMeeting with HD Faces. GoToMeeting is an awesome, awesome system. And you know, I mentioned last week how this summer we've been traveling all over the place. You've been on vacation. You've been going places, doing things. But you know, work doesn't stop. It just keeps going. And sometimes you need to be able to check into work And you need to be able to be in on a meeting even if you're on vacation. And sometimes it happens. Well, you know what? With GoToMeeting with HD Faces, you don't have to jump in a plane and come back home and interrupt your vacation if you have an important meeting. You can join that meeting electronically through GoToMeeting with HD Faces. And with an HD webcam like the one I'm using right here, the Logitech uh, 910, C910 webcam, you can really... It's, I mean, it's just like being there. Folks can see you, they can talk to you, you can collaborate, you can share information, you can share your desktop. You can even work from an iPad. Now, how cool is that? So you could be sitting out by the pool, enjoying your soft drink, and involved in a meeting right there on your iPad. Ah, sounds great, doesn't it? Well... If you'd like to get in on that, all you have to do is sign up for our 30-day free trial that Citrix Systems is offering through this special offer. Now, as it says right here on the banner that I have up here, you need to go to gotomeeting.com. need to do it now. Go to gotomeeting.com, enter the special code word PODCAST, okay? P-O-D-C-A-S-T, PODCAST. Enter that special code code word, and that will give you 30 days free trial. Now, I highly recommend Citrix Systems go to meeting with HD Faces, and I'm telling you, you won't go wrong going with go to meeting. All right, let's get into our blog entries this week. Of course, the blog being Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L dot TV, as it says right there, and we will start talking about some of the things that I have for you this week, and then we'll get into that special demo that I want to show you. Let's look at the new powerful challenger to the Raspberry Pi. Pi. You know, pi are round, bunny bread are square. (laughs) I know I'm dating myself. That goes back to the old Arthur Smith show. They use North Carolinians who watch TV when you were just young whippersnappers like myself way back then. You had Arthur Smith and his brother Ralph. 
And old Ralph, he was quite a character. And <laughs> he liked to say that. You know, pie or round, bunny bread or square. Bunny bread was one of their sponsors. Anyway, if you don't remember that, don't worry about it. Anyway, the raspberry pie. We talked about that before. $35 tiny, tiny little full-featured full computer. And yet a very small computer on a small board. Yes. Well, this is a competitor to it, a challenger. It's called the Hackberry. <laughs> the Hackberry A10 Developer Board. Now, it's 60 bucks, so it's more expensive than the Raspberry Pi, but boy, does it make up for it in terms of power. More power to the people. 1.2 gigahertz all-winner A10 ARM Cortex A8 CPU. <sighs> it's hard to say. Mali 400 graphics, 4 gig of built-in storage, 1.5 gig available in the Android user partition. Uh, 802.11 n Wi-Fi, built-in. 10100 Ethernet, 2 USB 2.0 ports, SDHC card slot for more storage. An HDMI output, so you can put it to your big screen TV. A 3.5-inch microphone jack, so you can use it to record things. Composite video output and a 4-pin serial header. All on a little card that is about 65 bucks. Yes. Should be fun to play with. All right. Next item, Roku raises $45 million dollars. From News Corporation, B, Sky, B, and others. They've gotten an investment from all of these various content providers that are going to be doing things with the Roku box. And we've got some, we got a, several Roku announcements this week. This is one of the big ones because it gives them the finances they need to uh, broaden their advertising, their games transactional and pay-per-view video as well as content packages so more stuff coming from the Roku or for Roku and for us as users yes contributions for Ouya <laughs> on Kickstarter have topped 8.59 million dollars whoo I'd say that's a successful Kickstarter startup yes indeed and as we'll find out shortly, they now have their own Ouya website. You know, they've been running everything off the Kickstarter site um, and talking about all the things they have going on there. And uh, now they have their own website. And you can actually buy, kind of pre-order, the Ouya system at their new website. And I'll go ahead and mention that their new website is Ouya, and that's O-U-Y-A, dot TV because you plug it into your TV for the video portion. So, ooyah.tv, that should be fairly easy to remember, as long as you know how to spell ooyah. <laughs> yes. All right, LibreOffice 3.6 is out, so you must upgrade. Go forth and upgrade. Why, you ask, Dr. Bill? Well, of course, it's got bug fixes. It's got all those usual things. New features are in there. The cool thing is it looks prettier. Yes, it's more graphically looking and stuff. It's cooler looking, so go for it. So, it has a new Corel Draw importer. It has integration with Alfresco via the CMIS protocol and limited share port integration. Color scales, data bars in the spreadsheet cells, PDF export watermarking, improved auto format function for tables. In other words, it's got tons and tons and tons. I'm not going to read them all. You can read them in the article if you'd like but lots of new features. So it's definitely worth the upgrade, particularly since it's free. Come on, folks, free. I, mean, I was talking to folks at work, and they were talking about you know how much it cost for a Microsoft Office license for folks at work. Well, dude, just use LibreOffice. It's free. It's got awesome features. It's awesome, and it's free. <laughs> Did I mention that? open source. It's the way to go. Anyway, now, 
a recent press release, this is a new item, by the way, <laughs> says that Amazon Cloud Player is coming to Roku. I told you we had Roku information this week. Amazon Cloud Player, so I can play my music. I have all my albums uploaded in my Amazon Cloud account. Don't you love the cloud? It's so fluffy. <laughs> yes. Anyway, you can put your music there, as I have, and then you can play it on your phone. This is my phone. I actually had it with me this week, <laughs> which is kind of cool. So I can actually go here, and I can hit the Amazon MP3 button, and then you can see I have all kinds. I don't know if you can see that or not, actually. Let me, let me see if you can see it. Let me go to the... The camera, yes, you can kind of, uh, as long as I don't get the shiny going there, you can see that there's a list of albums there. And uh, bunches of them, actually. <laughs> bunches of albums. Ooh, that was a shiny. Anyway, as you can see, little bitty thumbnails of the albums. You can click on it, and you can click on it again, and it will start playing. After it starts downloading, it takes a moment to to download the uh, the goodness. That, of course, is Stephen Curtis Chapman's "Dive." That's the name of the song. Anyway, I'll stop it. Yes, and yes. Okay, I'll put it down. Uh, you know, I play with things if I pick them up and start playing with them like that. Anyway, so the cloud drive, cloud player, is on my phone, and it's in the web, and it's everywhere, and it's on my Kindle, the cloud player. But now it'll be on the Roku soon. Not yet, but soon. Cool. So that's one of the things they're going to do. Dude. Now, whoa! <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Kicks off for the week time, apparently. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Anyway, Kicks off for the week this week is Anti Twin. Now, this is not software that will take out your evil twin. Although that might be useful software. <laughs> I actually have heard that I have an evil twin out there somewhere. People have told me, I saw a guy that looked just like you in Greensboro. That's Greensboro, North Carolina. He was shirtless. <laughs> Dude, that ain't me. I don't go shirtless. <laughs> but he was shirtless, and he was driving an old pickup truck, and he looked like a bum. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <sighs> anyway, you know, twins, so if he looked like a bum, then, eh, never mind. Anyway... <laughs> Anti-twin. Anti-twin is software that allows you to find files that are identical even if they have different names. Now you say, but Dr. Bill, if they have different names, aren't they no longer identical? Well, the content, silly. The bit level content might be identical. You may have a, uh, let's say, a dissertation that you wrote. Yes. I know a lot of you are saying, oh, sure, I wrote a dissertation. Well, I did. I had to to get my doctorate. And it was long. Had to be very, very long. And it was very important. I didn't want to lose it. So I saved it in several different directories and several different hard drives when I was working on it. And I pretty much kept it the same name, though, even though I made multiple copies. But had I called it something different, this software would have searched all my hard drives and found duplicate instances of the same file even if they had different names. Now that's pretty cool. And so what that would allow you to do is find duplicate files and get rid of them. Save this space. Yeah, there you go. So, highly, highly useful software. Yes. Alright, let's do a demo of the Zorin OS. Now Zorin and I talked about this once before. I actually recommended Zorin once before, and I said I was going to do a demo of it. But I haven't gotten around to it until now. It's been quite a while since I talked about it. As I said then, Zorin is not the evil dude that is the bad guy in the, uh, 
Generations, Star Trek Generations movie. You know, the guy that was wanting to get back into the Nexus? Yes. Not that Zorin. <laughs> Spelled the same, as far as I can tell. Z-O-R-I-N-O-S for operating system. Zorin OS. It is a variant of Ubuntu Linux, and therefore is cool. But it's even cooler for you folks that are used to Windows. It's very Windows-like. And somebody might say, some Linux dude might say, well, then what do I want with it? Well, think about your little old grandma who isn't very good at using computers and is constantly getting infected with spyware and malware and viri. Viri. That's the plural of viruses. Viri. <laughs> at least it is in my world. Yes. Anyway, give them Zorin because they'll get around very easily. As you will see in this demo, let's install it and then look at some of the features right now. We're selecting our English installation and continuing. From here, we're going to pick, of course, our drive that we uh, set up in VirtualBox and continue on. And, of course, we do want to erase the disk, so we'll go ahead and do that and install. And I will say this, I have cut some of the uh, extra footage out of this entire installation, so it'll go pretty fast, I believe. We are, of course, in the New York time zone, being right here in High Point, North Carolina. So we'll choose that and continue. It's going to copy some files to our hard drive. And, of course, English. Yes, indeed. English Cherokee. Now that's interesting. <laughs> All right, I'll just go ahead and type in my name. And uh, though it shows a name for me, I think I'm going to erase this and type in something a little more, uh, yeah, let's get it right, <laughs> a little more generic Zorin OS. And of course, Dr. Bill. And the amazing, incredible, super secret password. Eh, a fair password. Okay. And they actually match, so we'll continue. And again, I've cut some of this out, so there'll be a few little minor jumps along the way as we move along in the installation. Nothing to see here. And as a lot of uh, installations do, it will give you a slideshow of some of the major features of the operating system while it's installing. Again, I've cut down on the time between these slides uh, you can install it yourself and read them at your leisure, but we want to get through this part of the installation fairly quickly, so we'll do that. At least gives you the headlines and the high spots. This is a very graphical um, installation and interface, and of course it uses LibreOffice. Gotta love that. We'll talk about that here a little more in a few minutes. It also has a lot of uh, digital, uh, or excuse me, mobile uh, features as well. The ability to use Ubuntu One to store your data. You can also select web browsers. I like this, the web browser selector within Zorin. Very nice. And it has a uh, Gwibber, which allows you to watch your Twitter and Facebook feeds and other social networking feeds directly from one uh, integrated software system here, which is kind of nice. Now remember, all this is already installed within the OS. This, all this software you could get in a regular Ubuntu 
uh, distro by selecting it. All right, installation's complete. We're going to restart. But the thing I like about Zorin is it's already built in. I don't have to go out and find it and install it and so forth. And I'm going to uh, go past that backup thing and just go ahead and let it reboot. We'll go ahead and hit enter and Zorin will boot actually now off of the hard drive as opposed to off of the live edition. So we'll type in our super secret password. Excuse me. <clears throat> Clear my throat there. And it puts us into the standard Zorin interface. Now uh, you can select different interfaces and of course it's taken a moment here the first time we boot to kind of build out the uh, menu system and so forth so it'll take a little longer initially than it will. I'm going to go ahead and open uh, Google Chrome. I like the fact that Google Chrome is installed by default. Uh, again, they've made software selections for this distro that I'm really excited about. Now if I wanted to, I could log in here with my uh, Google account and sync Chrome, but I'm not going to do that right now. Just wanted to show you that we do indeed have Chrome. And uh, we now can go into the menu. It's still not quite ready here. We'll, there we go. Now we can see that it does look very much like Windows. And that's why I say this is a very Windows friendly uh, version of Linux. Now this is the look changer. You can make it look like Windows XP uh, so that the menus are more familiar to XP users uh, or GNOME or you can go over and select Windows 7. So let's do that. We'll close this out. Go back and check the menu which is again still changing over with the look changer. There we go. Now we have a Windows 7 looking <laughs> uh, graphical interface and look at all the uh, software that's already pre-installed. A lot of this are actually the software that I would select to put into a distro. So that's one reason I'm really excited about Zorin uh, as an Ubuntu variant distribution. LibreOffice of course, my favorite free and open source office suite that I use for everything. Here's our LibreOffice calc spreadsheet which is of course completely Microsoft uh, supported, compliant, however you want to say that. And uh, let's, I keep clicking on the wrong thing there, I'm still getting used to the interface. Let's go into Writer. I think I accidentally clicked, yeah I did, on the Software Center. <laughs> so that's coming up in the background, but I wanted to go into Writer and mention that LibreOffice, this is uh, this is a very recent edition. It's not the most recent, which is 3.6, which is now out, but it is still a very good and solid edition of LibreOffice. Um, let's go, let's go actually, oh yeah, this is one thing I wanted to show you too, is Wine. Wine is already pre-installed, so you can actually install and run some Windows programs if you would like to try it under Wine and a lot of them run. I know eSword runs very well, a lot of other things. Uh, but this software that's already installed, like I said, the GIMP, uh, lots of things that I would have installed had they not already been there, but they're already there. That's really nice. Let's go ahead into the Software Center. I saw that in games we didn't have Frozen Bubble, and of course, you know what? You gotta have Frozen Bubble. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and add that in. I'll show you how easy it is to use the Software Center. Just locate it in the search engine, click Install, and then type in your password. This is the super secret password that I mentioned earlier. Same thing you use to log in. Once you authenticate, it goes ahead and installs, and I'll cut out some time here uh, during the install. So we'll go ahead and jump ahead just a bit here in a second. There we go little quick jump 
so that we can go ahead and see Frozen Bubble in action. Now that we have installed it, I'll close the Software Center. It's got that backup thing. I'm going to don't show that again. Give me a hard time. And we'll go into the menu and go to applications and games. And notice, this is what I wanted you to see, Frozen Bubble is now in the menu. I can bring it up and play good old Frozen Bubble. Now if you've never played Frozen Bubble, i got to say, you've got to try it. It's really an awesome little program. And uh, it is quite addictive, actually. <laughs> if you've never played it, I encourage you to try it out. Uh, remember, we're running on a virtual box operating system, uh, or uh, hypervisor, I should say, for the operating system. So it's going to be a little slower than if I was running it native. But we'll go ahead and select the first choice, the first level. And there you go. Frozen bubble. Can fire my little bubbles. There you go. Let's let's go for the red ones. Yeah, now the yellow. Alright, more red ones. Of course you're going after the bubble that is the color that you're firing. And you've got to hit at least three at a time in order to get rid of them. And see, red, one's not enough. I'm going to have to have another red. So I'll wait for another red. That way I can get rid of them. I like to stack them if I don't have the right color. Like that. And then now I'll hit the green. Well, oh well, there's a green. Three greens. Get my reds so I can hit the reds, the blues, and now I can hit three greens. And, well, I missed. I should have gone right between them, then I would have hit it. <sighs> okay, three greens. Ta-da! I'm a winner. <laughs> yes! So, of course, I'll sign it. And it's a great game indeed when you win. <laughs> Ooh, level two. I thought I selected level one. There you go. Anyway, Zorin, the operating system, easy to use, very much like Windows. Gotta love it. And of course, you have the opportunity to play your music. And let's see here. It, oh, whoops. Yeah, there's the accounts. There we go. Shut down. And we'll close out this demo and shut down our virtual box. Okay, wasn't that cool? I'm telling you, if you're a Windowsy kind of person that's looking to move to Linux, this is the way to do it. Go with Zorin, the Zorin OS. Yes. All right, next item NASA's Curiosity Rover, which is awesome uses the cloud. I talked about the cloud earlier. It uses the cloud to store stuff. How cool is that? Anyway, I'm pretty jazzed about the rover landing. It was quite a feat, as they called it, the seven minutes of terror, because they weren't sure it was going to successfully land with all the finagling they went through to get it there, but it, they, it did, and it worked. Cool. And some of the pictures we're seeing, oh, they're awesome. So at any rate, uh, Amazon, as you know, has a cloud computing thing going on, Amazon S3. I use it to store the videos from my show, as a matter of fact. And I use their CloudFront service, tied in with that, to distribute the shows throughout the Earth. Yes. So, with all the large-scale data processing to be done, JPL the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, is leading the way in the adoption of cloud computing in the federal government, said Kayawa Shams, manager for data services at La Canada, Flintridge-based JPL. La Canada, yes. At this point, JPL's data centers are filled to capacity, so we're looking for ways to cost-effectively expand the computational horsepower that we have at our disposal, he said. Cloud computing is giving us that opportunity. 
dude. So they're using cloud computing for the Curiosity rover. Wow. I mean, a rover the size of a Volkswagen. I used to, my first car was a Volkswagen. Zowie. And it's nuclear powered. Or as President Bush used to say, nuclear. <laughs> nuclear powered. Wow. <laughs> cool. Anyway, and it has a laser beam. It has a laser eye. It's highly geeky, you gotta admit. Anyway, so it's time for the Game Master segment. Yes, indeed, time for my son Benjamin, otherwise known as Game Master ZX, to join me for the Game Master segment. Your brightness level's shifting again. I, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm too radiant for your camera to handle. Apparently, the camera is going, what, what? You are on the Microsoft camera, though, so. Explains everything. That does explain a lot. Um, whereas <laughs> I am indeed on the Logitech 910 webcam. That, that so, that. just saying. Mm. Um, anyway, so, we were talking about Guild Wars. Two. Two. And I didn't say dose this time. I was very good. I caught myself. Although I just nullified that. Anyway, does it doesn't matter. <laughs> Point is, uh, we were talking about the general pieces of the Guild Wars 2-ness and that you were stress testifying. Yeah, I didn't uh, really get to talk much about details about the game. Yes, and we are going to try to keep this segment somewhat short because yeah. I ran along on the regular show. How dare you. Yes. That means I don't really have time to get into, like, the combat, which is what I was planning on getting into this week. But that would probably take at least 20 minutes. So. Oops, there goes the brightness again. I'm going to I'm gonna just leave it alone. You guys can just deal with it. Deal with it, man. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I think I'll just hit a few more general points that I kind of, I think I missed last time. Okay. Uh, for example, the graphics on the game. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying they're really disappointed with them. I'm impressed with them. Because the game looks beautiful, first of all. I mean, just the, the design of the game, the art style and everything, is just visually... I don't know. It's just attractive. You know, it makes you want to play the game. I see. And I'm playing on a fairly old PC by this point. I got, what, 2006? Yeah, 2006 era. Yeah, somewhere around there. Anyway... I'm still running XP. That tells you something. Uh, and I'm playing, because it's such an old PC, on the second to worst graphics level, and yet it's still very impressive looking. Cool. So, I was impressed by that. I'm actually shutting down programs that are running on my computer because There's a thought. you were, uh, your mouth was kind of moving, but the sound was Lag. behind it, and it was... Yes, I think we're caught back up now, now that I've killed about three or four additional programs <laughs> that we're running. Speaking of lag. Yes. Uh, we just had a good example of that. Yes. No, but uh, these last, because there have been a lot of stress tests going on, you know. The last few have been really bad with the lag. But um, they've assured us that that's just because, you know, they're stressing their servers. What? Is it lagging again? Yes. It's, no, it's not lagging. It's the brightness is going uh, wonky. Uh, I mean, anyway. really seriously wonky. Uh, it, 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 just keep going. I mean, there's nothing we can do. It's just weird. What's Microsoft doing with their webcam? Anyway. Uh, eating it. <laughs> it's just been so bizarre. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, I will laugh, by the way, if that turns out to be all on your end and it's actually recording perfectly. No, I think it's actually... Like, going into night, like, just there, you went into darkness, and then you start, slowly started coming back into brightness. Magic. It's just... Anyway. Odd. What was I talking about? You were talking about lag. Lag. Uh, lag's been really bad these past few stress tests, but uh, they say that's just because they're, you know, stressing their servers to see how much they can handle. That is the purpose. Exactly. So, when I played during the weekend events, when it wasn't quite so... Laggy. Compressed, I guess. <laughs> it was, um, you know, running very smoothly most of the time, except for when my computer was being dumb. Anyway, uh, so graphics, running speed is pretty good. 
I mentioned the music briefly last time. I wanted to mention it again because I recently found out that the composer for Guild Wars 2 mm-hmm. did it, also worked on the Elder Scrolls series, which is like probably the biggest role-playing series in all of ever. Maybe not, but kind of feels like it is. Anyway, um, and a lot of the tunes actually sound very similar to Elder Scrolls tunes. Mm-hmm. Which is good if you like that music and you like to hear that style of music, but it's not so good because I kind of can't help but think of Elder Scrolls games now when I play them. Play Guild Wars, that is. Yeah. Which is kind of a double-edged sword, because it... Guild Wars does have that sort of, you know, exploration-y feel to it. Mm Mm-hmm. So it does kind of evoke that uh, same image in the player's mind, but at the same time, you shouldn't be thinking about a competing game while you're playing, you know, someone else's game. It just doesn't quite feel right. I can see that being an issue. Although, one thing they do do with their music that's interesting is they actually let you plug in your own music from your computer and play it. That's pretty cool. Directly through the game. Neat. Also supports um, automatic uh, VoIP ducking, so the game audio ducks down when you're talking on a, like Skype or whatever. Ah, I see. Which is pretty clever, really. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. Does not have bol- built-in voice chat, though. You have to use a second-party pro- second, yes, third-party program. Yeah. So, um, and Skype does work Hello. and doesn't choke it too badly? I haven't actually tried it yet. I, I haven't uh. actually played with anyone yet that I know that I would have a sni- Skype snipe connected snipe to. Again. Go hunting for a snipe. <laughs> There's something productive to snipe do. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But anyway, um... So, yeah. Generally, I am very excited about this game. You should be, too. All of you. Yep. Every last one of you. So, you want everyone to join you in the questery and the uh, the going forth and the doing of things. Exactly. Uh, the server system, by the way, you know how a lot of MMOs like segregate people by server? You can't mm-hmm. play if you're not on the same server as someone? Guild Wars 2 sort of does that, but um, they allow you to actually be a guest on other people's servers. Oh, that's cool. So you can't actually play with your friends even if you're on the different servers. Ah. The only restriction to that is you cannot play in World vs. World, because World vs. World is basically one ser- well, one server versus another server versus another server. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't really be fair if you could like guest on other people's servers and like cheat for them, essentially. You know? Yeah. So um, that's the only restriction to that. Uh, I'm currently, as of the beta, playing on the Emory Bay server, right. for those of you who care. Uh, but, I mean, there's no guarantee that server will even exist once it launches. We don't know what the servers are going to be yet, so I'll keep you posted. So if it does, though, they could theoretically join you on the same server and you could, like, quest and... They definitely could. Slash and hack together. Exactly. Because <laughs> the really interesting thing about the leveling system in Guild Wars 2, or specifically the... Um, at one point, they called it the sidekicking system. I don't think it's still called that. But um, basically, when you go into a level or an area that's lower level than you are, you're, like, too strong for it, mm-hmm. it'll back you down to the level of that area so that you can actually enjoy the content as, you know, as challenging as it would have originally been, more or less. Cool. But they still let you keep all your abilities, so they're the same abilities, just with less, you know, they do less damage, basically. Yeah. And you have less health. Interesting. Which is really clever. So if you have, like, friends that are new to the game and you're, like, level 80, then, you know, you can still play with them and not really be that much stronger. Cool. So we are running about eight minutes at this point, roughly. Okay. Are you wanting to stop it there? We might. I just really am annoyed at this night thing that's going on. I mean, it is nighttime that we're doing this, but it just keeps getting dark. It's for ambiance. I guess. It's we should just bring candles in next time and have them set up. That's true. <laughs> we could, you know. Oh. Oh, oh boy, that was too bright. Okay, Smooth. never mind. I'm going to quit playing on the brightness control. Um, so we'll pick up here and discuss from the next time that we do this. And maybe yeah. we'll do it during the day when the light won't be fiddling fiddly bits. And maybe we'll have more time so I can actually talk about, say, the combat system. 
that would be good. Just saying. So we'll 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 shoot for that then. Alrighty, well, as usual, the doctor is out of here. Way out of here. They say that. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.